Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 21 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll talk about using flex time and tempo changes. In the previous three videos, we talked about how we can alter time and quantize audio uh, in Logic using flex time. Uh, one of the cool uh, extra features of uh, flex time is that we can actually create tempo changes and make audio files and audio recordings play back at different tempos than they were originally recorded. So what I've got here is a session with uh, one drum loop at the top, a audio file that was rendered from the uh, Razer instrument from Native Instruments, and then on the bottom I have a software instrument that is just MIDI data. So let's listen to what this sounds like. Okay, so let's say that we want to change the tempo of our project and we want all three tracks to conform to the tempo change that we make. A couple things to keep in mind here. First, the MIDI data at the bottom here on our software instrument will always conform to the tempo change. Also, our Apple loop up here on the top will also always conform to a tempo change. Now, the way you can tell that this is an Apple loop is you'll see two circles with a line under it as opposed to this region where there's uh, two interlocking circles, which just means it's a stereo audio file. So audio regions that are not loops will not conform to tempo changes. So let's just give this a try. Um, let's go up to our transport, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna change our initial tempo from 125, and we're gonna change it to uh, 150 to make it faster. So just double click and type in 150. So as you can see, the uh, middle track has gotten longer and the upper and lower tracks have not. And what's actually happened is that the upper and lower tracks have gotten faster uh, and conform to the tempo change while the middle track has not. Now the reason why this happens is that audio files other than Apple Loops have a fixed time base of samples which in this example essentially means that even if you change the tempo, the, uh, the position of each of the samples in the audio file stays the same, whereas Apple Loops and MIDI data have a relative time base, so they'll adopt the new tempo. So you can hear that the upper and lower tracks sound fine. Let's add the middle track back in. Yeah, you can hear how the bass line is falling uh, way out of time with the other two instruments. So what we need to do is we need to have the middle track change its time base to ticks, which is a relative time base, uh, much like the Apple loop, and much like the MIDI data below it. So the way we do this is you just turn on flex time by clicking right here. And I'm going to use the flex time automatic algorithm, which automatically figures out uh, what the best algorithm is for us. And here it shows that polyphonic is the best algorithm. And as I showed you before, remember that when you use polyphonic, uh, it's always best to turn on the complex uh, option in the track parameters. And you'll also see that the waveform has a bunch of transient markers in it. You can pretty much just ignore those because as long as you've chosen a flex algorithm, you can change the tempo to whatever you want, and it'll conform that entire uh, region to the new tempo. So I've changed the tempo to 150 BPM, and let's listen to what this sounds like. All right, that sounds great. The middle track fits in nicely with the tempo change and the other two tracks. Let's try a more like laid back feel. Let's try uh, 80 BPM. All 
All right, so that sounded pretty good. You probably heard in the uh, drum loop especially uh, that some digital artifacts were produced from the time expansion, and that's to be expected. Anytime you push the tempo up or down anywhere from about 10 to 20 BPM, you are going to experience and hear some uh, digital artifacts produced from the time compression or expansion. So next, let's talk about how to change our tempo across time. Let's say that we want to start at a lower tempo and then slowly increase to a, a faster tempo. What you can do is you can show your global tracks uh, by clicking here or by pressing G on your keyboard. And one of the global tracks is the tempo track. What we can do with the tempo track is we can change our tempo across time from a fixed tempo to a moving tempo and uh, Apple Loops and MIDI data, as well as our uh, audio file down here that has flex time applied to it, will conform to that tempo change. So the way you do that uh, is essentially this line is just automation. You double click on it and you can create uh, two tempo uh, points. And I'm gonna pull this up here to a faster tempo. So let's say 158, and let's pull our first point down to a slower tempo. So we'll go with like 80. Um, so what's going to happen right now, if I leave it as is, it's going to play the whole thing at 80 and then just abruptly jump to 158. What we're going to do is grab this little point here, this little node here, and we are going to change uh, the arc or the curve of the automation so that we can have a gradual tempo change that goes from 80 BPM to 158 BPM. Now you can also use this to create slowdowns as well, and it also works for any audio track as long as you turn on flex time like I did before. All right, so you can hear there that uh, all of the tracks in the session sped up uh, to the tempo change that I made. And this essentially lets us create what's known in concert music as an accelerando, a speed up, or a retardando, which is a slowdown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my list editors. I'm going to show you one more way we can do this. Uh, in the tempo list, one thing that you can do is you can create a fixed uh, tempo change rather than a gradual tempo change. And what you can see here is that right now at position 1111, we have a tempo of 125 BPM. That's basically just denoting the original tempo of the project. Um, so basically what that means is that uh, bar one or measure one, uh, we have uh, beat one, and then we have division one, and we have tick one, we have a tempo of 125. So we can add in a new tempo change by clicking right here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a tempo change of wherever your playhead is. So right now my playhead's at measure 10, so I click the plus button, it says, hey, we have a new tempo change at uh, bar, uh, bar 10, uh, beat one, div uh, division one, and tick one. So I'm gonna double click on the tempo there at bar 10, I'm gonna change that to say uh, 150 BPM. So what this means is uh, at uh, measure 10, the tempo is gonna immediately change to 150 BPM. We can also check this in the global tracks and you can see there that the tempo will immediately change at measure 10. All right, so that's how you can create tempo changes with tempo automation, flex time, and the tempo list. Now, I think in the last video, I think I said that I was going to cover flex pitch next in episode uh, 22. 
Now, in episode 22, I actually have one more topic I need to cover concerning tempo changes, and we'll be talking about a function in logic called VeraSpeed, which is pretty cool. Um, so we'll, I promise, we'll finally get to flex pitch by episode 23. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks again for watching.